And my dudes, uh, so you know, as you know, I've been an artist for many, many years and I got my start very young. So I've had a 29 year career as an artist already. I have achieved almost all of my art dreams. But what if, man? Uh, what if none of that happened? What if I what if I were starting fresh today? What if I had not any a single credit to my name, no published works, uh, no audience? What would I do? Where would I go? What would I do? And what would I do if I were 16 years old or early in my early 20s and I just wanted to start a new art career? in 2022 because the landscape is so different now man uh there's so many more tools at your disposal but there's also far more competition because those tools are so much more widely available worldwide mind you uh, you're competing now with everybody all over the world uh, before i begin i want to express that this is just my perspective based on my own experiences and my own strengths and things that i've learned it's not by any means is it meant to be a roadmap for you to follow it's meant to get you to start thinking about some of these topics and how you might apply some of the information based on your own experiences and your own strengths and your own opportunities that you may have for yourself because it's going to be different for everybody first and foremost i would ask myself what are my strengths i mean obviously you have to have some drawing ability right it is entirely possible these days to just write funny comic strips if that's more of your strength for example and funny comic strips aren't necessarily drawn well i mean look at the oatmeal but generally with all the competition if you want to be an artist you're going to have to get good at painting so that means taking a lot of courses and workshops and tutorials to at least understand fundamentals and don't skip the fundamentals man don't do it so practice every day until you can at least identify some of your strengths. And then I would even write down what are my strengths? Like, what am I actually good at? And sometimes it's just the ideas. Maybe your ideas are really good. In which case you might wanna go the route of concept artist. You might have to do a lot of pursuing of that a career path if you want to do that because it's it's not just drawing pretty pictures let me tell you i did that for 20 years it's not just drawing pretty pictures and some of you may have already decided that's your track it's like yeah i just want to get a character design job at a video game studio and that's a pretty straightforward path uh, find out what they need look at the portfolios of the artists that work there and get your skill level up to that quality standard by dissecting it into small portions such as oh do i need to practice anatomy today do i need to take trent's workshop on environment concept art design so that i know how they actually design environments at uh, some of these companies that i want to go and work for well then it's a pretty straightforward process it's not easy uh, but it's straightforward. Bust your ass to get good at the thing that you want to get employed to do and then send your portfolio in to get a job when they're actually looking to hire. If you're looking for employment, you don't have to be on social media. You don't have to work on building a public presence. Most people will never know who you are. So focus all of your energy on getting the art skills that are required to get that job. And that might include going to art school. Although I don't think that's necessary. Watch my video about do you need art school? to find out more about my philosophy on that. And if you do get a job at a game studio, buy stocks in that company, uh, or find a way to get stocks in that company so that you'll continue to get paid for the work that you do well into your retirement. Otherwise you get nothing. When they fire you or you leave, you will get nothing. So make sure that you get some kind of uh, stocks in it. Or you could take the path of just owning everything that you do in perpetuity by just going the independent route, which is what I would choose to do in the current era. After all, this is the era, the booming era of the creator economy. I would bypass employment altogether and I would start my own business. And uh, the reason is because you get to own everything forever perpetually. So you get dividends on stuff that you made 20 years ago. I still get paid when I re-release the first comic book, the first successful comic book I ever made called Creed. I still get paid for that. I still own that. In fact, uh, it's still my corner, my little corner of the comic book uh, history. Now, admittedly, the paycheck is always way less when you're doing something independently. Almost horrible pay, really, for like a long time. But it does compound. So eventually you're making pretty good money if it catches on. So going the independent route and making your own products, well, it can be a longer, harder road, but ultimately you can't get fired from that job. Uh, no employer is gonna fire you. <laughs> you cannot get replaced and you can't get aged out. Uh, in fact, you're kind of building your own legacy. You're building your own legend. Uh, whereas working as an employee, it doesn't matter. You know, if you were the lead concept artist on that game, eventually they remake the game 
or <laughs> eventually it's grandpa's game and the new generation it doesn't care about grandpa's game. So going the route of employee is really just sort of like uh, taking the paycheck for the work. So I can't emphasize enough how important that is for you to get stocks in the company that you're working for. You know, if you go that route, because everybody knows who created Spawn. But for a character in a video game, that's much harder to come by. And there are exceptions, but that's very few of them are in America. <laughs> it's always going to be hard to sell your babies, especially if you care a lot about them. But Creed and Twilight Monk, they're lesser known IPs, but I get, you know, much more of a profit share on those. And more importantly, people know that I created them. A lot of times with the games I've worked on, people have no idea that I was involved at all. I traded that for the paycheck and the paycheck was good. So if I could start over, uh, I would say that I would just build my own thing and I would let other people try to license it from me <laughs> after I turn it into a success. I would turn all of that same energy of staying up late at the office and designing those environments for those companies. I would spend that extra time working on uh, my own IP and learning how to market it better, learning how to uh, get it into more people's hands, building it into a franchise, building it into a big brand, the way that Todd McFarlane has built Spawn into a brand. If that didn't pay the bills, I would take on contract work. I would work from home. Or maybe I would have taken on contract work for an art house like Aquatic Moon or something like that and uh, done that, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week while still making time to develop my own brand, my own IP. And this is, by the way, all of this has more to do with my personality. <laughs> and you might not be like me, you know, maybe you want to, you know, take a different path. This is just me exploring where I would go if I were starting over today. If you go that independent route where you're going to own everything you do and not take a job, well, you're going to have to learn how to market and promote. And that means mostly just being present. So I would be posting every single day on social media, whether that's on Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube, I would be posting every single day uh, to bring up hype and to also make people aware of what it is that I'm doing. And I would be doing studies. If I'm not particularly good at something, I would be doing studies with all that time. And my social media channels would be the display of those studies and how I'm improving and how my project is moving along. And when you're in your 20s or you're, you know, and still in high school, it's like, you, all you wanna do is make that thing. Well, at least I did, I, I can only speak for myself. And if you're not in this boat, by the way, don't feel bad. Don't be like, oh man, I better do it the way Trent says. This is just the way I would be doing it because when I was in high school and I wanted to make a comic book, I couldn't sleep at night. I would sleep three or four hours a night and then I would groggily sleep on the bus on the way to school <laughs> in study hall or art class. I'd be working on my comic book. And, and it was just every free minute that I had was working towards my goals and my dreams. And then uh, the only difference is that now uh, social media plays such a big part in that. People are more interested in supporting why you're making something than what you're actually making. So have your character stand for something. Have your books stand for something. Have your product be a symbol for something that is representative of something that your audience is in line with. For example, Twilight Monk is about the underdog. It's about the guy that nobody believes can do it. So he's giving it everything that he can possibly muster. And you know, that's I think very relatable to a lot of artists who are just trying to find significance, screaming into the void, giving it everything you've got, and it still feels like, what, is this even worth it? And if you read those books and you read the reviews, you'll see like that connects with the very audience, you know, that, I'm, that I uh, make my videos for as well. The lessons that he learns in martial arts are the same kind of things that I talk about in my videos here about the art arts, <laughs> I guess you'd say. And again, this would tie in directly with what are my biggest strengths for me? I think it's storytelling. I think it's character design and character development. I think it's world building. So I would amplify that and I would have something, I would even be making the type of indie game that involved those things very heavily. So something like a, uh, I, I couldn't do something like a Grand Theft Auto. That's a 50 million, $100 million project. I would have to do something closer to what you see with uh, Hollow Knight or even some of these lesser known indie games. If for any reason I, I couldn't get a game together and uh, required more people or resources than what I had, I would just do as much of it on my own as I could. So 
I suppose that's why I'm still doing Twilight Monk art books. That's like, that's all the world building stuff that I would have done if I were working on a AAA game. If, if I had $50 million to make the Twilight Monk MMO, I'd be doing the same damn thing every day, except I'd probably have to manage, you know, 50 to 60 employees. <laughs> when do you have time to draw when you're also doing that? Yeah, I do think you kind of have to draw every day. Otherwise people forget about you. Uh, you have to be in the news. You have to show up. Sometimes you don't even have to perform really well. Sometimes you just have to show up. I think that's a really important thing that a lot of people don't realize. 90% of the challenge is just showing up. Another thing to keep in mind is like, you don't need really expensive equipment. Uh, a lot of times people get stopped on that. They're like, oh, I can't do YouTube. I don't have a big expensive camera. Well, you don't really need a fancy expensive camera. You can actually start out with sort of a cheapy older camera. You know, you could go down to an old pawn shop and find an old video camera. But I think I broke a hundred thousand subscribers uh, just using an iPhone headphone uh, microphone. So yeah, you don't have to have big fancy equipment, uh, you know, even, like a big expensive Wacom tablet or something, you don't have to borrow a bunch of money. I would never, never borrow piles of money to get equipment, uh, big expensive equipment, until I actually had some income coming in from it. I would make sure that I have a lot of merchandise available on print on demand services, such as InPrint or even uh, Amazon, you can do uh, print on demand books. So yeah, while you're doing your art books or while you're doing your comic books or whatever, put it on print on demand. You know, it's, it's a pain in the butt to learn how to do it, set it up for print, but it's totally worth it if, because you know, if somebody wants to support you and buy a print copy, you have them available. That's a big problem that I think that a lot of people starting out don't realize. You have to have a product, man. Uh, just having a big Instagram following makes you zero dollars, man. You have to have a physical product or something that people can purchase, whether that's a digital product that they can purchase or some way for people to support you. And I suppose things like, uh, you know, Patreon aren't such a bad thing for that. I just, I never got into Patreon because I was already established on Gumroad. I really love Gumroad. If I were just getting started in 2022, I would absolutely start a Gumroad channel today. And I would put up products that people want. I would ask myself, what do people want? And this is the kind of thing you really gotta dive into and just get your feet wet before you can start to figure out how to improve it. The most important thing that you can do when you're building your own business is to build a mailing list or to build a, let's just say a committed community uh, of people who are interested in what it is that you're making. So if you're writing novels, for instance, Chris Fox talks about this. He says he does a YouTube channel about teaching writers how to reach a bigger audience. And he suggests that you should have a mailing list and give away some kind of free product to get people on your mailing list. Now, this is a tactic that I've used on my Gumroad channel as well, whereby, yeah, you can download free samples of my fiction. You can download free samples of my first three books plus an art book. And if you like it, uh, you can make a purchase. But uh, if, you, if you're satisfied with that, it's fine. It's totally fine. But you're on my mailing list now. So when I release a new novel, uh, you're going to get an email from me <laughs> because you've shown interest in my books specifically. Don't just go willy nilly adding rando people to your mailing list. It's annoying. You can really turn people off from you and your brand and just you all together if you're trying to sell them things that they don't have interest in or don't want. And don't have a bunch of different products that are all different types of things. Like, um, I kind of wish I knew that before, but like, if you're going to make comics, focus on comics until you got an audience doing that. So you kind of have to build an image of a person. And that person is your is your avatar of the, the customer that you're actually trying to make happy. And you have to ask yourself, what do they want? What do they buy? What are they going to keep jonesing for? Not just what do they want, but like, what do they need? And we're all like this with something. I mean, you're likely here because you're an artist or you're aspiring to be an artist. This is why I put all my gameplay videos of Metal Gear Solid over on my other channel. <laughs> and that's okay, we like what we like. Everybody's like this. I don't like all anime, but if there is a cyberpunk or sci-fi anime, I'm, I'm in, I wanna check that out. But I'm not interested, for example, in high school drama anime about 
a young girl struggle to try to understand the brooding, studious, you know, tall, dark, and handsome guy. No thanks, bro. I don't care about your high school witchcraft story. That does not, <laughs> doesn't interest me. But you give me mechs and, you know, uh, motorcycles on freeways through a, a dimly lit neon city. Oh yeah, baby. Give me some mech fighting. I love that stuff. And I would want to get advertised if they ever made awesome anime again. I would want to know about it. I, instead, I have to like hunt it down, but it's a very genre specific thing. So that's the other advice that I would give you is like, find your genre. Uh, you know, if your genre is dark fantasy and you love to do dark fantasy paintings, make that your thing, man, and stick with that thing until you build a big enough audience. Then you can start to branch out once you've built a bigger audience, and there's a, you'll have to gauge what your success point is, but this video is about getting started with it. So I would say commit to a kind of a genre that is expected, commit to it. Like if you love drawing mechs, do make that your thing. But if you mix in drawing other types of content, it's gonna be a little bit of a harder sell at least until you've got a bit more momentum. Now I've worked on World of Warcraft, I've worked on League of Legends, so I can kind of get away with a pretty broad range there. People already kind of expect that from me, but mostly I think people expect a fantasy genre from, from me because of the games I've worked on. And uh, that's tricky because in my heart of hearts, I really want to do some cyberpunk sci-fi type of stuff, but it's a, it's a hard sell because I think people sort of expect a, a certain type of content from me. And, and that's what you, you kind of have to build into that. You'll have to find those things for yourself. You'll have to find your genre that you excel at, that you enjoy doing, that you understand. And usually that comes from a place of what is your most, your biggest interest, what's gonna keep your interest because you're gonna be stuck doing that for the next 30 to 50 years. So pick genres and pick types of content that you really enjoy doing because like I said, yeah, you'll get stuck doing that. The other thing that I would recommend is that you become an expert at that thing. Become an expert at why that type of content sells. What, the, what does the customer see in it that they love? And be really good at explaining why. Become really good at explaining in, the, in terms that the average person can understand. Simplify. And that's gonna help you with marketing. And yeah, you're gonna have to learn how to market. Now, the, the key to marketing that I found is that I don't try to sell anybody anything. I, I make the products that people want and then I let them buy it. Marketing isn't anything more than finding people who are looking for something, letting them know that your product exists and that it will deliver what it is that they're already looking for. For instance, I didn't start making my workshops and my tutorials because I wanted to sell people workshops and tutorials. I made them because I couldn't find any other professional who was working in the game industry that was making them. I couldn't find anybody else who made a workshop that showed you exactly what the process of doing concept art for a video game like Diablo 3 was actually like and what kind of feedback you would get from the art director. I would have job listings where I'm hiring artists and I would get portfolios that had no concept art in them. So I had to make tutorials to explain this is what concept art is. This is what should be in your portfolio if you're trying to get work at a game studio or if you're trying to do concept art for video games. There was no other resource teaching the things that I knew, so I made a product that I was good at. And it's helped a lot of people get jobs and start their career in art. And as a side note, if you can do something that helps other people, you'll be very successful. Probably the most valuable thing that I could say to you, if you're just starting out with your art career, is that you need to be of value to other people. Ask yourself every drawing, every day, is this valuable to somebody? If it's not, don't do it. If you're just indulging yourself because you like to see something, uh, then maybe you need to think about like, is this going to satisfy people who are just like me in, in the genre that I'm aiming towards? Is this going to sell? Uh, is this something that people are actually going to want? And yeah, I'm, by the way, I'm talking about a career as an artist here, not as a hobby. If you're just a hobby artist getting started right now, then hey, disregard all of this. You know, just have fun, do whatever the hell you want and uh, damn the consequences. You don't have to make anything for anybody else. So just have fun every single day doing exactly whatever the hell you want. If it does start to sell, keep those things in mind that I talked about before. Analyze why people like that. Analyze, you know, is this hitting certain tropes in a genre? And a lot of times you'll find people don't really want something totally new and unexpected. They actually just kind of want more of the same. Just like with anime, I really just want more cyberpunk anime. 
I just want more Akira. I just want more Cowboy Bebop. I just want more of a, like science fiction anime, Armitage or Ghost in the Shell. And if you package something like it's cyberpunk and it's not, let's say you got a robot on the cover, but there's no robots in the, in the actual anime, I'm gonna be disappointed. So in summary, find your strengths. Uh, practice those strengths in front of other people every single day. It doesn't matter if you're particularly good at it yet. Analyze and dissect why it works. Uh, find the genre and uh, tropes of that genre that you are understanding people purchase it for or that why they get behind it, why they take interest in it. Build a mailing list or a community around the genre and the type of thing that you're making. Understand the business of how to sell that through marketing and make the product that people want available at an acceptable price point in an easy to digest format, such as a easy to purchase print on demand book or a digital delivery system. Keep your product within the budget of what you can actually afford. For example, don't try to make an MMO if you only have $100 to your name. Become an expert at explaining how and why what you're making is working. This is mostly just about teaching yourself to be aware of why you're doing what you're doing. Don't borrow tons of money to buy expensive equipment you don't need or, or risk it all before you have any income from your art. And keep refining your process. I can tell you this, there's never been a greater time in the world for an artist to succeed. It's never been easier, but that doesn't mean that it's easy. It just means that it's never been easier. Your biggest challenge, your biggest hurdle is yourself. Your biggest hurdle is the perception that you have. I certainly wish you all the greatest success in the world. I want to see you succeed. So if you have something that you're already on this path and you're just building it now, please do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. The artwork that you're watching in this video is from my workshop, the Landscape Workshop Part 10 through 20. It's also going to be a location in the World of Twilight Monk Art Book Volume 2. That's right, I'm still going. And uh, this Volume 2 art book is going to be out this year. I promise, this time for sure. You can, of course, pick up Volume 1 over on Amazon. And don't forget to leave a review. I'd certainly appreciate that. All right, that's it for me on this one. Thank you, dude, so much for stopping by. And I'll see you next week. Ciao, baby. Oh, yeah. Dude, what the heck is Twilight Monk? Which is the first book to buy? I get this question a lot. So I wanted to clarify, if you don't know already, yes, I've worked on many successful video games, but now I'm making illustrated novels and art books. And uh, the order that you should pick them up in if you're interested in the world of Twilight Monk is to start with the book called The World of Twilight Monk. This is an illustrated art book, but it features a lot of backstory on characters and locations and populations and the different cities and what they do with those cities. And this is the, the groundwork for all these adventures that I'm about to tell in the illustrated novels. Now, which illustrated novel should you start with if you want to pick up the Twilight Monk series and start reading about these characters? I highly recommend you start with the the Secrets of Kung Fulio. The Secrets of Kung Fulio has 70 illustrations by myself and Danny Kong. It's a 50,000 word book that was written by myself and Chris Krubick. It has a lot of Kung Fu fantasy adventure action. It is the story of a reluctant teenage hero who has to overcome this bully who's trying to kick him out of town, basically. But he kind of totally stinks at Kung Fu, so he's gonna need to build some alliances and he's gonna need a shortcut to ultra secret Kung Fulio mastery. It's got comedy, it's got action, it's got, uh, it's a buddy story too. So lots of heart. Oh, just read the reviews, man. People are loving this book. And yes, the illustrated novel series is a series, in fact. So uh, you can look forward to The Return of the Ancients, which is coming out in illustrated form later this year. You can pick up The World of Twilight Monk and Secrets of Kung Fulio, as well as many of the other comic books and illustrated novels that I've written and drawn over at AquaticMoon.com. All orders are delivered and fulfilled by Amazon, so you can read reviews and get that prime shipping, baby. I can't wait to share these Kung Fu adventure stories with you, and I hope you'll come along for the ride. I'd love to read your reviews as well. So dudes, that's it for me on this one. I'll catch you in the next video. A ciao.